So today we're gonna have a look at Dwarf Fortress, which is a um, quite indie game and quite a low uh, player population, I think, but it's quite a special game. So I'd like to introduce this to you if you've never seen it before. And um, there are two ways to play the game. You can play it building a Dwarf Fortress, as the game is called, or you can play it as a single lone adventurer, you know. You can understand the... the, the Dwarf Fortress mode as something similar to, to Rimworld or something like that, where you kind of try to survive and build a little colony and all the other survival things, collecting food, making clothes, and so on and so forth. But for this video, I want to have a look at making a hopefully <laughs> successful adventure. I say hopefully because it's a hard game and it's uh, very, very easy to die. And most of the time, the, the popular joke with the, the player population of this game is that dying is fun. But this is the, the screen you get when you load into the game, and actually you don't start with the start playing uh, menu option here. The first thing you have to do if you've never played the game before is you have to make a new world. And there are two ways to do that. You can choose the, the simple create new world option, which simplifies all the options and makes it very easy for you. If you're not familiar with uh, complex user interface things, then that's probably the best option for you. I'm fairly familiar with Dwarf Fortress though, so I'm going to design a world with advanced perimeters. So if I just press enter here and go to this, get this funky loading screen, okay. And all I'm going to do now is, if you have a look in the middle of the screen, I can choose between different sizes of either island or region. I'm going to choose a, a medium island, and I'm going to modify the advanced parameters by pressing E. Actually, there's only one parameter that I, I really want to, to modify. It's not something you have to do, but it's, it's something of a, a personal choice that I find makes the game a little bit more fun, in my opinion, which is reduce bogeyman types to zero. Because bogeymen are a pain in the ass that comes out at night, and will eat your ass if you try to travel alone at night. I like to travel alone with my adventurer, so having bogeymen in the world, you know, kind of forces me to just stay inside at night all the time, it, you know. But if I want to travel at night, I can just modify this, and then it'll be just fine. Once that's done, I can press enter on this medium island, and I can press Y for yes. Now we get this, this cool thing where the game actually generates a, a whole new world for you. Totally randomized, everything is randomized. And not only does it do all the, the mountains and the, the oceans, the plains, the trees, everything like that, but then it also generates a history. It plants civilizations, whether they be elves or humans or dwarves, goblins, so on and so forth. And then it lets them progress through time. They, they build roads, they they breed, they make things, they settle new towns and make new towns, they they have trade routes between the towns, and we can see it happening. I mean, maybe a lot of these uh, symbols don't make sense to you, but if you can see it, the, the lines often represent either rivers, if they're blue, if they're brown, there'll be roads. Um, some of the small symbols, such as the sure how to describe these symbols, the circle with a dot in the middle would be things like towns. But if we want to, to stop and have a look at this any time, we can just press enter. And this will pause the the history generation at any time. So if you want to, to play in a world that is one year old, you can do that. Ten years old, you can do that. If you want to go to a thousand years, you can do that, but it will take a long time because as the, the world gets older, the game has to remember more things. And so it, it takes a bit more of a strain on your CPU to continue generating a world with with so much history. But we, we now, uh, if we pause, we get this little flashing yellow X. You can see that in the middle of the screen. And using the arrow keys, I can move this around. And as I move it over different things in the world, it will tell me what they are at the, the very top. So for example, if I move over this, it says this is the human castle of... Ivaxuwu, and this is in the, the awe-inspiring plane. If I go, for example, over to this purple dot, this is the Dark Goblin Pits of Baxdozu. 
Let's see if we've got anything else interesting around here. Let's see, what's this one? This is a tomb. Um, the yellow here would be a desert. The, the gray arrows or spikes here are mountains. Um, let's see, these would be dwarven mountain halls. They are in the mountains, of course. And they're also linked by underground roads, which is very interesting. Uh, we have things like a dark goblin fortress, even. So if I want to to play as this world now, if you look in the, the bottom left corner of the screen, I can just press U, and U will let me use this world as it currently exists. Alternatively, I could press C. If I press C, the world will then go back to generating the history through the years, and on the left side you can see that this is the, the Age of Myth. The year 126, 127 tells us how many notable figures have died, how many events there have been, which is uh, quite a lot. And the Age of Myth isn't like a, a set name. That name would actually change according to some of the things in the world. What the Age of Myth represents is that there's a lot of big bad monsters in the world. Imagine, um, imagine the Disney movie Hercules. That's what the world is like. <laughs> there will be Hydras and dragons and uh, colossi and all kinds of nasty stuff everywhere. So if you want to try and be some super amazing heroic adventurer that is quite likely to die, then the Age of Myth is a, a suitable <laughs> age to do it in. And usually if you wait long enough, the Age of Myth will go away and it will change to a different age. And what that means is that actually some adventurers, some heroes in the world, have already gone out and killed these monsters for you. And once the, the monster's population goes down to a certain level, it stops being this age of myth, as it's called here. But um, I think 150 years is probably fine, so let me just, let me just stop it here. Press enter. Let it finish generating the year or so. Finishes on 157. Let's press C to continue. Oops, no, I didn't want to press C, C did I run? I'm thinking continue as in let's use it, but continue means generate again. I want to press U to use. Okay, there we go. Okay, it says in the, the bottom left corner, it says Romorid. The ageless universes have been created. So when you when you create your world like this, it even gives it a, a cool little name. And we even get things like uh, polar caps. So this this bottom side of the map here is all ice. Glacial ice. An awful, awful place to live. As we, as we go up, we get more temperate regions, we get deserts. And at the very top, we have more deserts again, but no, no polar cap at the top, just at the bottom. Okay, so let's, let's accept, let's press enter. Let's export all of this, this map information. Now one of the problems with it being this kind of continental, or two large continental islands is, you're not likely to be able to cross that ocean. You could try to swim, but it would take an exceptionally long time, and there are things that live in the ocean that might just eat you as you're trying to swim, and so the the risk and the, the time it takes are probably not worth trying, but you, you are free to try if you like, if you like um, pain. Okay, so now it takes us back to the to the main screen, so we can press stop playing now. And we can choose the, the world that I created, which is called Romorid. And this gives us three options, Dwarf Fortress, Adventurer, or Legend. Dwarf Fortress is, as I said, the typical settlement building mode of the game. Adventurer is the lone one creature that you play as mode. And Legends is just a way to explore all of the, the different events and people and even special items that have been created in this specific world that, that you generated. So if you would like to browse who the heroes are, who the villains are, who the gods and goddesses are, if there have been any special artifacts made, any amazing 
source or, or things like that. You'd be able to find them in legends. You'd even be able to see the history of creatures. You can... Maybe there's a, a dragon that has killed 200 people. And you would be able to look at this, this dragon and see all of the different people it killed and in what year and things like that. It's quite interesting. Almost like reading a, a newspaper in some way or with the Wikipedia of your world. I'm just gonna go with Adventurer. So let's press enter here. And now the game actually has to go through two weeks of uh, time before you can create a character. And if your character dies, then it will be permanently dead. And you can actually just go and create a new character in the same world where your character is dead. You would even be able to go over to your character's corpse and take all of its stuff. As long as no, no other creature has taken it before you get there in those uh, two weeks. Okay, so here we are. Create your character. And uh, Dwarf Fortress has an interesting character creation mode. You're not limited to just, uh, let me see, dwarves and elves and goblins. You can be a, a hamster man. <laughs> you can be a human, or you can be a jaguar man, or an opossum man, a raven man, a dingo man, a dunes page, dunes pages soldier. Or even something like an intelligent wilderness creature, which then, if we go to that, that that opens all of these these different options here: a chipmunk man, an elephant man, a fly man, a great horned owl man, king cobra man, and these are not just like these are not just aesthetic or um, what would you call it style things like you would literally be a king cobra man with with fangs and poison and and all the other things like that you would have a a different size and uh you know that plays into things like when humans create armor that is human sized if you are not human sized then you're not going to be able to wear it right if you are a huge elephant man then this tiny human sized armor is not going to fit on your body if you are a, a leopard man, probably you have quite sharp claws on your hands, and you can use those as your weapons if you would like to. Uh, when you bite people, if you bite people, um, you would do much more damage if you are a leopard man compared to just being a normal human. You know, our our teeth are okay, but uh, they're not that great at biting, not compared to a leopard anyway. So all these, all these different wonderful animal people choices can be can be very fun and uh, an interesting choice if you would like to have a a more humorous playthrough or I mean it's not that you can't be successful with these kinds of creatures but a lot of the time the the real issue is that armor if you want to do like a a lot of combat armor tends to to play quite a large role and so if you if you can't wear armor because you have wings or you whatever else that then starts to become a bit of a problem but you can make it work it just takes more work and you have to be more careful and things like that but if you'd like to to have fun and practice with these things by all means go ahead i know i know i have plenty of times so i'm just going to be a boring old human and so the next thing we have to choose here we see there's a a status option that says peasant hero or demigod if, it, if this is your first time making an adventurer, probably you're better off choosing Demigod. All it really affects is how many skill and attribute, po attribute points that you get at the start. And because it's such a, a hard game, there is, there is no shame. <laughs> no shame in taking the Demigod choice. And it doesn't even really mean Demigod because you will die quite as easily as everybody else anyway so really just having those extra stats at the start is a is a nice way to help you help yourself enjoy the game so the next option we get is to choose where where we are from and if we if we go down this list with the arrow keys if you look on the map you'll see that different symbols become highlighted in blue as i do so and all this means is you're choosing where your character comes from and also where your character will, will start when you start the game. 
So mousing over these, we we even have Outsider, which is I'm not from any of these places. But the Outsider then also comes with some issues where because you're not part of a civilization, you don't really start with any good equipment because you don't live with anybody and you don't have access to those things. The different symbols that you see are also important to pay attention to. So the, the hashtags, let's say, are human settlements. And so this is human, this is human, this is human too. This one is a dwarven settlement. This one is dwarven, 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 dwarven. The eyes with the little hat on top represents elven civilization. So these two are elven. Elves tend to live in trees, in dwarf fortress, and they mostly have wooden weapons and armor, which a lot of the time, you know, are not very effective. You imagine trying to hit people with a wooden sword, mm. or would you rather have an iron sword? Mm. Eh. Maybe iron might be better for that kind of stuff. So let's see, let's, let's choose a juicy human settlement. So that would be one of these at the top. I like this one, this one looks good, it's called... Pesor Saw, the Confederacy of Funerals. Okay, that's a that's a fun name. <laughs> and uh, okay, now we get a new new menu option. So this then lets you choose the exact town that your your character is from. And we get this small box with the, the yellow text that will tell you some quick information. So you have things like a, a hamlet. Let's see, a hamlet, there's a castle, hamlet, 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 hamlet. Okay, castle, castle, yeah, hamlet, castle. I'm hoping one of them will be a town. Towns are nice to start in, lots of things to see. The castles are also okay. One of the the benefits of starting in a castle is that there tends to be at least some equipment lying around that you can make use of and borrow. And uh, Sometimes you can find really nice armor, really nice weapons that these, these civilizations have been making over time. So let's see, let's see if there's a nice, a nice town to start. Often the, the towns have a kind of castle component anyway. So let's see, this is a castle. I only saw one town, a human port, no. Hamlet, castle. Okay, this is called Perfect Pondered. It's a little bit too far north for my liking. Let's, let's go back to the other one. Hamlet. Okay, castle. There. Thor Spring. Right on the coast. That sounds just fine. Okay. So Thor Spring. Let's press enter on that. Okay. You are a stone worker in Saw Spring, a human town, and you have never strayed far from home. Okay, let's if we press right now. We can choose our occupation, and we have all kinds of different things. <clears throat> but because I want to play as a kind of adventurer, a warrior, um, I'm not going to to choose something like a weaver or a fisherman because then I would just have bonuses to fishing and um, I'm not going to do any fishing so that's not going to be exactly helpful but the one we can choose is a hearth person here at the top this is like a a god of the notable people in the town so let's choose that one and let's go over to beliefs now we can choose who we worship let's see the Ashen Coven is a religion whose adherents worship Dungda Gristle Phantom, the goddess of blight. Okay. Donu, the bone of death, the god of death. The sect of oblivion, the goddess of de disease and deformity. Wow, these are, these are interesting. The kindness of charity. Okay. Disease and deformity. The Dwarven Goddess of Death, Disease and Deformity. What is it with these gods of disease and deformity in this place? They have a, a real issue, huh? The God of Fortresses. Oh, that's a nice one. We're playing Dwarf Fortress, so a God of Fortresses would be, would be good. God of Death, a God of Death, God of Murder and Death. Okay, the Face of Wickedness. 
two big one. Okay, that's that's now top of my list. The Dead Order, God of Death, God of Fortresses, Disease and Deformity. Okay, I'm not seeing a kind of pattern here. Death, Death, Disease and Deformity, Blight, and then Consolation. Sorry about the disease. Okay, so going with the faith of wickedness. With w worship Sish or Kish, the god of murder and death. Yes, let's do that one. Destiny is calling. You are a casual worshipper of Kish. Okay, and at the, the bottom left, we can actually use W and Q to increase or decrease our faith in this god of murder and death. And because I... I want to be a bit of a a killing killerton. I will increase. I will believe in, in the god of murder and death. I will be an ardent worshipper of the god of murder and death. That sounds good. Okay. So that one's done. And now we'll, if we have a look at the the bottom right hand side, we can see that we can actually even change our our name. So we can do a customized name, or we can do a random name, and we can also change our gender with G. So should we be a boy or a girl? And what happens, let's see, can we find any interesting names? Psycho... Is that a C or a G? Psycho Zephyrsling? Okay. Ostri Thorn Sculpted Champion Punch? Okay, so that's, that's kind of cool. I'm going to keep that one, Champion Punch. Okay, well, let's press Y for next. Now we have our skills. Now, if we're going to do fighting, then the the most important attributes, if I remember correctly, are strength and agility, as high as you can put them, high toughness, high endurance, and then also some some willpower, because willpower affects how much pain you can take, which is a, another interesting mechanic actually in Dwarf Fortress. If you get hurt then your character also experiences pain and if you don't have enough willpower then your character can actually pass out from the pain. And so you imagine if you're trying to fight goblins and they, they break your arm and you pass out from the pain they're not just gonna stop bashing on you, they will literally bash your skull in while you pass out on the ground. So not passing out I would say it does have some advantages in that regard. And now we have our skills. We can choose things like swordsman, maceman, axeman, hammerman, pikeman, bowman, crossbowman, spearman, lasher. Lasher uses whips, things like that. And then fighter is the, the general all-purpose fighting skill. So every, no matter which weapon you choose, all soldiers or adventurers or whatever also need to use the, the fighter skill. So which which weapon type to use? Which one to be good at? Things like hammers and uh, maces, they're very good at breaking bones and of course breaking skulls as well. Do well against armor. But then again things like swords, you can chop people's hands off. And if they don't have a hand, then they can't hold a weapon or a shield. If you chop their feet off, then they fall down, you know? Just like if somebody chopped your foot off, you would also fall down. So, these things are, are always worth considering. And then, of course, axes are good at chopping too, but with a, a sword, you also have the option to stab, which a, an axe does not have. And then things like uh, spears and pikes. Yes, they, they are also very, very good at stabbing but there's no chopping. So you can stab a lot, and you can stab well. I mean, you can still stab people in the foot, and they'll probably fall down, just like you would. But it's not quite the same as um, seeing the the hand fly off across, across the screen as you chop it off. So maybe I'll go with, I'll go with Swordsman for, for this adventurer. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. Let's, let's choose Talented. Talented Swordsman put fighter up to competent. Now we do want some skills in swimming, because if we don't have any, then as soon as we jump in a river, or fall in a river, we will 
drown and die. And that's not fun. Climbing too can be very, very helpful sometimes. You can even choose Rider now. This is a this is a new skill actually since I I played the game last time. You can now ride things. You have mounts. You can ride on things, I guess. Whether it's a, a bear or a horse or whatever happens to be the, the flavor at that time. And I'm not going to, to do that. I'd like to just make a a pretty normal soldier. Let's see. Yes, we should take some dogs with us. And wrestling allows you to do some interesting things as well, like throw your opponents on the ground. Um, you can break their arms and legs with wrestling as well, which is pretty nasty. And uh, yeah, like if somebody broke your arm or leg by wrestling, you, there's a lot of pain involved, and which then can make you pass out. So try not to get wrestled by things, especially the the bigger monsters in the games, the, the in the games in the games, things like uh, giants or trolls or ogres or cyclops. If they manage to grab a hold of you, you're probably in for a bad time unless you can get out of there too sweet, because they might just twist your arm off or something like that. It's pretty damn gross. Striker is for punching, uh, kicker is for kicking, of course, pretty, pretty self-explanatory, biter, don't need to say anything, thrower is for throwing things, you could, you could even like, you could make a, a character that is so good at throwing that you can kill things by throwing rocks at them, because you can just throw rocks with such, such accuracy and such speed that, um, the rocks like just go through their, through their head and, you know, rocks go through your head, you're pretty dead, right? Most of the time. Then you have a bunch of non-combat skills, which you, know, you can use in the game. You you can be a, a poet. And you can even get your character to make poems and recite them if you want, but I'm not going for a, a weird adventure or playthrough here. I'm going purely on a, a combat thing. But one thing we, we should take is at least one point in the reader skill. And to to increase or decrease these skills, I, I didn't say, I should say, we have to use the plus and minus keys. So if we want to go up, we have to press plus. And if you want to go down, you have to press minus. That's how we, we change it on the screen here. So reader, that way we can actually read signs and uh, books and things that we find, which is uh, fairly helpful, especially if you're trying to find your way through a town. If you don't have the, the reading skill and you go over to a sign, it'll just be gibberish to you because your character is not the one who can read. So it's a, it's a little bit of a, a sneaky thing put in there. Usually most characters you create in most games come with the ability to read, but not in Dwarf Fortress. So let's see, anything else here? Beekeeper, herbalist, no, okay. Surgeon, wound dresser. Let's just put another skill. How many points? 16 points. Can we increase swordsman again? Let's see. Well, we can. Now it's an adept swordsman. And five points left. Let's let's do let's do wrestler for five points. Okay. Now we can press Y for next. Now we get our appearance. His greasy straight hair is extremely long. He has high cheek bones. His head is broad, his hair is brown, his skin is pale pink. His eyes are aquamarine, his eyes have slightly thin irises. And we have two options we can do here. We can we can accept this if we'd like. Or in the bottom left corner of the screen without respecting population information, or we can just randomize. Population information means basically the civilization that you start in, you know, they they have a bunch of genetic traits essentially from reading things, reading people from all those and so coming from that civilization you you have those traits that are that are common. So if you just press R to randomize, it will keep that in mind and it will try to give you, you know, the traits from that kind of pool of genes. Otherwise, if you press F, it will give you anything. Let's, let's give it a try and see. 
his quite boss tag, which is a long Hello, yes, clear voice. Now, there is one thing that I want to look for here, and that is something to do with muscles. So let's see. Okay, nothing here. It's suitably muscular, that's the one I wanted to find. Now, this, this is like. So, what we can do is we can randomize. We get something like all the things that we saw. Incredibly muscular again. Nothing that's thin, but has incredible muscles. I don't want to be thin, I want to be big and heavy. He isn't tall, and no, that's that's not what I want. He is thin, no. Just incredibly muscular. He has incredible muscles of a small build, no. Incredibly muscular, same. Small build. He has a very broad chin. <laughs> ah, okay, this is the nice one. He has loaded a tall body with incredible muscles. That one sounds fantastic let's go let's press y now we get the the personality thing we can fully customize every part of the the personality here if we press f then we get this screen here essentially what this means is we get a an option to move each each thing here either to the left or to the right to say if we if our character cares more about it or less about it so NA is pretty neutral. Anything to the left of that is negative, and anything to the right of that is positive. You know, you see the, the plus symbols and the, the minus symbols, right? The C is the the default for your culture. So how does my how does my character feel about the law? I'd say that I don't care about the law. Loyalty is okay, family is okay, friendship is okay. Power, yes, I love power. So let's put that up. Truth. Mm, who cares about the truth, right? Cunning, yes, because I'm brutally cunning. Eloquence, eh. Fairness, eh. Decorum, hmm, who cares? Tradition, no. Artwork, yeah, art is okay. Cooperation, no, not today. Independence, yes, that's nice. Let's be alone. Stoicism. Yes. Introspection. Yeah, that's, uh, I feel neutral about that. Self-control. Yeah, a little bit is good. Tranquility. No. Harmony. No. Merriment. Yeah, who cares? Craftsmanship. Fine. Martial prowess. Yes, we care about that. We want to be a amazing soldier. Skill is important. Hard work, hmm. Sacrifice, hmm. Competition, hmm. Perseverance, yeah, there, there, it's worth something, I guess. Leisure time, no time for leisure in this world. Commerce, no. Romance, no. Nature, nature's nice. Peace, no, we don't want any peace. And knowledge is okay, I guess. Now these ones, lo we see no love or loves easily. Let's have no love, lots of hate, no envy, and we are cheerless. We have no sadness, but we have a lot of anger. <laughs> Anxiety can be neutral. Lust, yes, we'll be filled with lust. Vulnerable to stress, no. Greedy, neutral, intemperate, yes. Avoids fights or likes to brawl. Yes, we like to fight. That's the whole point of this adventurer. Quits easily. Too stubborn. Stubborn. Mean or wasteful. Neutral. Harmony or discord. Discord all the way. Do we fight or flatter? Let's let's argue with people. Are we rude or polite? Rude. Do we disdain advice? Yes, we do. Are we fearful or fearless? Fearless. You say lenimous or overconfident, neutral, vain, no, not vain, ambitious, yes, sense of gratitude, zero, <laughs> austere or extravagant, okay, that one's fine, humorless or zany, let's have maximum humor, 
maximum vengeance. Are we proud? We are proud. Are we merciful, impartial, or cruel? Incredibly cruel. And single-minded in that cruelty. Are we despairing, hopeful, or presumptuous? Let's just stick with hopeful. A little bit curious. Shameless. Private. A little bit of a perfectionist. Neither acquiescing or resisting ideas. Tolerates indifferences. To or tolerates differences, yes. Emotionally obsessive. <laughs> okay, let's leave that. Swayed by emotions a little bit. Altruistic, no. Dutiful, no. Too deliberate or thoughtless. A little bit thoughtless. Sloppy or orderly. Distrustful or too trusting. We, are, we don't trust anybody. We're a loner. We are a little bit assertive. Mm. Excitement seeking, absolutely. Just facts or flights of fancy. Okay, let's... A little bit of facts is good. Inclined to abstract, I guess. Inclined to create art? No. Okay, that's all done. Let's... Let's, uh... Let's press enter and see what this says now. He personally thinks that the world should be engaged in perpetual warfare. <laughs> it's repelled by the idea of honesty and lies without compunction. Sees power over others as something to strive for, treasures independence. Thinks it is of the utmost importance to present a bold face and never grouse, complain, or even show emotion. Deeply respects the skill at arms, really respects those that take the time to master a skill, greatly respects individuals that persevere through their trials and labors, is somewhat disgusted by romance, sees those that attempt to maintain dignified and proper behavior as vain and offensive, <laughs> finds the following of tradition foolish and limiting is greatly disturbed by quiet and a peaceful existence. Can't fathom why anyone would want to live in an orderly and harmonious society. Is disgusted by merrymakers. Finds sacrifice to be the height of folly. Is offended by leisure time and leisurely living. Finds those that engage in trade and commerce to be fairly disgusting values self-control, values nature, values knowledge, dislikes cooperation, sees working hard as a foolish waste of time, does not care about fairness, doesn't care about art one way or another, doesn't really see the value in self-examination, and doesn't have strong views on competition. He dreams of ruling the world. <laughs> He never falls in love or develops positive feelings towards anything. He is often inflamed by hatred and easily develops hatred towards things. He never envies others their status, situation, or possessions. He is never the slightest bit cheerful about anything. He never feels discouraged. He is in a constant state of internal rage. He is impervious to the effects of stress. <laughs> He is ruled by irresistible cravings and urges, and he is troubled by this because he values self-control. <laughs> he revels in chaos and discord, and he encourages it whenever possible. Okay, okay, this is this is amazing. So I'm going to to keep that, and let's press let's press next. Okay, so this is a a nice new thing in the the more updated version of Dwarf Fortress, where you can actually choose the equipment that your, your character starts with, which I think is, is really cool. And so what we do is if we just uh, take away these these weapons first by pressing the, the minus key, I do not want a copper scimitar. We can keep the knife and the loincloth. Do we want a skirt? Okay, well, and a dress? Like, I'm pretty sure I'm a male, so let's let's remove the skirt and the dress. A cow leather head veil. Okay, let's take rid of let's get rid of that and the gloves. We'll keep the socks. Get rid of the sandals. Keep the backpack. 
prepared blue shark intestines. Okay, we, we can eat that. That's fine. A water skin is good for water and a pouch. Okay. And now if we want to add any new things, we can press N. Actually, you do get a very similar screen to this in the Dwarf Fortress mode when you first prepare your, your starting dwarves and what they bring with them. You also get a, a screen just like this. And so that's where you have all the different things like ropes and thread and bags and buckets and things like that. But as an adventurer, you only really need some things. You need food, water, armor, and weapons, really. Those are the important things. So let's see, body wear. Okay, let's let's see. Let's take an iron mail shirt. That, that's what would be a good one. And go back up to where the armor is. So let's take an iron helm. Okay. We go down, would that be faster? Yes, okay. So body wear, head wear done, hand wear, iron gauntlets would be good. This only gives us one. So if we actually just press plus now on this, that will give us two. Because you have two hands, right? So you do need two gauntlets for those two hands, unless you would like one to be chopped off. And that usually doesn't go very well, so I don't recommend it. Would wear iron high boots or iron low boots. The high boots are better because they actually cover more of the, the bottom part of your leg where where the, the low boots don't. So sometimes if you if you don't have the right pieces of armor, they can actually be like a kind of chink in your in your armor where you've got boots and you've got some, some armor on your legs. But the, the bottom part of your leg, between your, your ankle and, let's say, your knee, is maybe not covered. And somebody will just swipe you there in that part of your unarmored leg. And bye-bye goes your foot. And you fall to the ground. And you're probably going to die from that as well. So high boots, yes. And make sure we press plus to get two. So two gauntlets, two boots, a mail shirt, a helmet. And what about the legs? Leg wear, yes. Iron chain leggings would be nice. And so we've got legs, we've got chest, we've got helmet, gauntlets, boots. How about a sword? Weapons. So scimitar is 140. A long sword is 300. A two-handed sword is 380. How many points do I have left? 380 points. Okay, so I think I do want a shield. So why don't I take, let's see, how much is a, a shield, a good shield? Shield, 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 270. <sighs> Ouch, expensive. So then, so then. We take the iron scimitar still have 240 points. Maybe we can take a bronze shield or something like that. Let's see. Shield, shield, shield. Bronze shield, 130. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. 108 points left. Let's see. We also have the option to increase the quality of these, these armor pieces or weapons, but you can see in the, the bottom left corner that it's actually grayed out because we don't have enough points to increase the quality, but just having full iron armor and at least an iron weapon at the start is a pretty good start. So maybe maybe I'll just see. I've got socks and a loincloth and a leather robe. How about some some leather pants or something, or at least something to cover my legs other than just the the armor? So leg wear, let's go up, let's do... Okay, they just have skirts. I guess this is a kind of um, skirt civilization. <laughs> so let's let's put a a wool, wool skirt, why not? So wool skirt, we have socks, we have a robe. How about a, a chest piece? Okay, let's... Do the I guess we could take a cloak. That could be handy. A leather cloak? Hmm. Nautilus sperm whale orca. Orca leather cloak? That sounds cool. Let's take it. 
Orca Leather Cloak. Yeah, 66 points left. Skirt, cloak, robe. Maybe if we can get a hood or something. Hood, hood, hood. Orca Leather. No. Headwear, yes, this one. Orca Leather Hood. Let's try that. Cloak hood. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let's press. Let's just increase the food we have so we don't run out too quickly. And. Yeah. Let's start with that. Let's press next. Mm. Next. Yes. Now we can even can even add a new character to the party if we want. We can start with, with multiple people, which is uh, pretty interesting. I'm not going to do that, though. I could even start with a, a kitten or a cat, if I feel like it. All kinds of, of animals here. I could start with a, a hunting dog. But um, to be honest, I would just be... I'd be quite sad if I saw my hunting dog die. <laughs> we have... A war elephant that you we can start with, but it costs 500 points. So I could start, I guess, with pretty much no weapons and armor, but on the other hand, a war elephant. Which would pretty much kill everything for me, to be honest. I, I mean, it's an elephant, right? So I think, uh, I think this list of animals actually changes according to the the world generation and the civilization you start in. That's how it usually worked, anyway. Can start with a, a camel, a rat, a rabbit, anything else, anything else interesting like a an elephant, a ram, a lamb, sloth bear, more camels, water buffalo, a yak, turkey hen, a slug, and a snail. <laughs> okay, and uh, yeah, right then. I could afford some of these things, but I don't want them to to come with me and unnecessarily die. So why don't I just press Y, done. And adventure awaits. Now we press Y, and we will go. Character creation, all done. You finally got your equipment together, such as it is. Now it's time for action and adventure. In the rush of excitement, you've forgotten where you were going to go. A foolhardy soul might try to rescue the children that have been kidnapped. Oh dear, kidnapped children. Perhaps some of your friends here have ideas. Okay, so this is how we start. This is what the, the game looks like when you start sometimes, which is, um, I guess for some people it's a little bit confusing, but these are all the the people that are inside this this town, this, this is probably the fortress of the town because I decided to be a hearth person. And so, you know, going over the, the controls really that we tend to use a lot would be things like, we can press the, the L key, that'll bring up a flashing yellow X directly over your character. So this is me here. And then we can actually have a look at everything else that's around us. So below me is the holy vomit. <laughs> Edry Oquikis. Okay. And if we if we press A, it says A next to his his name. If we press A, we can actually examine him. So he's got a silver slicing knife, we can see his his armor and things like that. If we press D, we will get a description of his physical attributes. And I was saying he, but it's actually a girl. Okay, her hair is extremely long, she has a scratchy voice, blah blah blah. Not so important, unless we see that they are incredibly muscular, and then we might not want to to fight them. Um, let's see, what else have we got in here? So goblin here. The goblin Lasher Arstruck Gogustus Boo. Okay. So aside from the high housekeeper 
<laughs> okay. The High Housekeeper. Medium-sized humanoid driven to cruelty by its evil nature because it's a goblin, right? We see everything here. Actually, this is a good a good example. Everything she is wearing is small because she's a goblin, so she has to wear small armor. So this is the 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 problem with you know having different sized characters. If you know if you make an elephant man adventurer, it doesn't matter where you go. There there's gonna be any armor around that fits you, which you know. Although you are an elephant man, yes, on the other hand, no armor. So the other thing we can do is if we press K, we we get this who you talk to menu and we can begin a performance, shout out to everybody. We can try to even talk to Kish, our deity, that's the god of murder and death if we want, so if I... So if I press a uh, plus here, it will navigate down the the menu. And if I press enter on Kish, at the top left I now get what will you say? And I can greet Kish. So I guess this is like praying, right? So let's say hello to the god of murder and death. Greetings, my name is Zostra Champion Punch. And then the, the menu kind of goes away. If we want to keep talking, we have to press K again. Who you talk to? We have an ongoing conversation with Kish. So let's let's continue this this ongoing conversation, and then we get all these these different conversation options. We can ask how Kish is feeling, which we I don't think we would get a response. I'd be very surprised if we got a response. And we can ask things. These are the things that you would use when you're actually talking to one of the the other characters. We can see here, not when you are just. Um, praying to your god but let's let's see if we can tell a joke to the god of murder and death <laughs> and the dwarves saw the sun and vomited on the spot okay well that's not that funny is it <laughs> and as we as we start talking now like all the the different characters are also doing things like they will move they will open the door they will even talk to each other and so if we press a we get this this announcement screen that tells us all the things that are happening, the things that people are saying. You see the the Abbot Julosum Pazuso. Oh, where is Dulu Matchlocks? I cannot give in to sadness. That might be one of the kids that's missing, right? The Spearman Tadin Rakfiliskak, and he's speaking to the Goblin Maceman Ongo Ostungurthung. Greetings, my name is Tadding Glasspawns. And then the abbot Anthabulekengi says, Oh, where is Boosbull Handle Merolds? I cannot give in to sadness. Wow, these guys are really sad about these these missing kids, huh? And that's me, like, and the dwarf saw the sun and vomited on the spot. Ha ha ha. And they're like, Oh, my kids are missing. Oops. Wasn't very sensitive of me, was it? Maybe I can talk to one of them and ask about these these kids that are missing let's see so duh, 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 let me just press k don't want to do an ongoing conversation so let's press plus let's start a new conversation and if we move using the arrow keys now we can move this this blue x over whoever we want let's talk to here, this abbot, this the abbot Julosum Pasuso. That was the guy that was so sad about the kids, right? So let's see. And uh, let's say hello. Hello. It is good to see you. This servant of death greets you. And I say, ha oh, I said, hey, Julosum, praise death. And that's because I am a an ardent worshipper of the god of murder and death. So I guess when I say hi to people, I say, praise death. It's kind of cool, actually. And he says, hello, it's good to see you. I am also a servant of death. All right, pretty cool. Let's continue this conversation. He seems like a cool guy. And uh, let's see, let's ask how he is feeling. Oh, where is Uho's gang pocket? I cannot give in to sadness. Okay, why don't you why don't you tell me who that is? 
Um, how about we inquire about some troubles? Well, let's see. We've got abductions, beasts, bandits, skulking vermin, bone-chilling horror, and the missing treasure. Wowza. Wow, that's a whole lot of problems you got, buddy. Okay. So, <laughs> we still have this this ongoing conversation with the, the god of murder and death. So, let's see if we can just say goodbye. Goodbye. Okay, and we will continue with... Uh, let's ask about the... The abductions. A year ago, Rovard Waded Tools was kidnapped from Sore Spring by Zom Peaked Plagues. Okay, let's press K and uh, continue this. So, abducted from Sore Spring. So, I don't want to ask for directions to Sore Spring because they were abducted from that place, right? It seems that this Zom Peaked Plagues is a Goblin. So why don't we we can ask about the whereabouts of this this dwarf robot weighted tools. I guess it's a dwarven child. Or we can ask about the whereabouts of the goblin zombie peaked plagues. So let's see, can do you know where this boy is? Probably on the move or deep underground, but I can't be sure. Well that's not very helpful, is it? So can we bring up a specific Incident or rumor. Oh, look at all these rumors of abductions. Oh, I spread a rumor. Many, many years ago, Ognus Riddle Blizzard was kidnapped from Juggler Trails by Ozard Abistic. Okay, it was inevitable. <laughs> okay, no, I didn't want to, to do this. Let's change. <laughs> we could state that it is terrific. That's terrific. No, let's let's change the subject. Let's ask about the the troubles. Yep, abductions and tell me about these abductions. Several years ago, okay. G Seb Sensual Sponge. <laughs> These names are just too good. Was kidnapped from Soul Spring by Oots Bad Sin. It's kind of a redundant name, isn't it? Bad Sin. Okay, so where, where is this this human? Ooh, Web Maligned is in the Still Murk. So they're in Web Maligned. Where is Web Maligned? That's what I want to know. Ask for directions. As for directions to Web Maligned. Aha! Uh -huh. It's far to the southeast, and we receive a detailed description. There is a tavern there named the Immoral Mushroom. <laughs> I mean, just... These names are too good. The Immoral Mushroom. Okay. These are, these are all randomly generated names, right? The immoral mushroom. Okay, so if I if I go to my map, I should be able to find this this place. I received a detailed description. When it says that in those little brackets there, it means that this thing is now kind of put on your map if it wasn't already there. So web maligned. So let's let's see. Can we? Uh, we have to to leave the surrounding obstacles. There's a map. Okay, how can we, okay, yeah, yeah, oh dear, oh dear, let's see if we go out of this building first, okay, we want to, to have a look at the map, what is the, the, the key for looking at the map, I know we have travel, and there is M for map, but that's not really very helpful, is it? Does it show us enough of the map? Mm-hmm. Hmm, the abduction. This is common knowledge where you are from. Okay. What about S? Sites. Aha, here we go. We want web maligned, right? Web, 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 web. 
There it is. I see it. It's a dark fortress. Oh, dear. And it's very, very far away. All the way over there. But it is now on my map, at least. Like, oh, dear. So, a goblin raiding party came and stole the children from this town many years ago. And is potentially holding them hostage at this, this dark tower all the way over there. At least I know where it is now. Okay. Let's let's stop. Let's press D and we'll get off of this thing. So let's go back inside and see if there's anything interesting to collect. Often these these little fortresses in towns have um loot on the floor that we can steal. If we press L we can have a look at the, the different things like uh this is this yellow thing is lunches, cloisters, problems and solutions. That doesn't sound interesting. Interpretations of lunches, cloisters. Okay, so they they like to write about a whole bunch of boring things. It seems. Okay, and now trying to get past so many people, we are on the ground. So if we press S, we can stand up, but we can't. Somebody's in the way. <laughs> we got knocked to the ground. And uh, we still can't stand up because there are people in the way. I'm going to start swinging soon if, if things don't change. Let's, uh, let's see, can we go up the stairs? Is there anything up here? No. If we want to go up the stairs, we have to use the 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 little arrow keys that, that symbol greater than and less than. Usually that's on your, your period and comma key if you press shift and press that. That's the, the key that allows you to go up and down stairs. And now because there's so many people talking, we get this this kind of talking screen thing happening here. We just have to press space to make it go away each time. Okay, yeah, we get it. You guys like to talk. Now I'm on the ground again. Oh my goodness, I need to leave this place. Okay, there we go. We're outside now. Now where, where's the where's the gate to get out? This one? No. There it is. So we can use the, the arrow keys to, to move left and right, up and down, but we can also use the, the number keys like uh, 1 and 3 to move diagonally like this, like this. And then also you would use, uh, I think, 7, yep, 7 and 9 to move diagonally up and, well, to the left and right. This is a a market. All the people here are selling stuff. We can see this guy is a butcher, a dwarf butcher. This is also a butcher. This is a glass maker. And uh, we can buy that stuff if we like. Wow, okay. Sounds like some people are fighting. Let's see. Can we, can we travel somewhere? We can. But actually, before I travel, let's talk to this, this goblin. And let's not say hello. And let's ask about the troubles. Uh-huh, abductions, beasts, and the missing treasure. Well, the other guy knew much more, didn't he? Of course, you, you ask the the high priest, he knows all the stuff, right? You ask the, the goblin in the market, and they don't know squat. So let's let's go back up, and let's see if we can ask that that guy some questions again. Let's see if we can find something a little bit closer to fight rather than the <laughs> the fortress filled with goblins uh, 500 miles away. Okay, here we go. All the talking again. Where are you, high priest? Okay, the chief executioner. That's cool. The holy vomit. What about the, the guy? The guy. The abbot. Let's talk to, to this one. Yes. And let's see, do you know about some more troubles? How's life here? Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. Abductions, beasts, bandits, skulking vermin, bone-chilling horror, and the missing treasure. Yes, okay, you're the guy I want to talk to. You know all the things. Tell me about the bandits. Because they might be a bit closer, right? Particular outlaws have been causing us much hardship. They have a camp called Brush Dressed somewhere 
in the awe-inspiring plane. Well, can you be a bit more specific than just somewhere? So give me directions, buddy. Can you tell me the way? It's a half day's travel to the east. Okay, and we receive a detailed description. Yes, that's the stuff. That is the stuff. Okay, I like you. Tell me some more stuff. Yeah, tell, yeah, there are more bandits. Okay, good. Tell me. Tell me about the bandits. Tell me about the other bandits. Malicious out laws have brought terror to our doorsteps. They have a camp called Frill Demons somewhere in the Buff Swamp. Swamps. Okay, so how about you tell me where that is? Can you tell me how to get there? Okay, a lot of people talking. So days travel to the northeast and we receive a detailed description. Jolly good. How about you tell me about some more stuff? Yeah? How about some beasts? What beasts? Mastering the forces of nature would glorify us in the eyes of the world. Dawn Beaks is in the Hill of Shocking. Seek this place if you hunt Kodor Hoary Forest, the Lush Shins, the Hill Titan. Okay, no, I'm not going to go fight a titan. No, thank you. It's a nice sentiment you have there, buddy, but... uh. I guess you can tell me where it is so I know not to go there. Yeah, do you know where it is? Yes, it's inaccessible from here. Jolly good. That means it's probably just across the ocean or something. That's just fine by me. Can't get to the Titan. Titan can't get to me. How about the skulking vermin? What's this one? Our oh, people have been pestered by skulking villains. They have a hamlet called Braided Tongues, somewhere in the awe-inspiring plain. Okay, they have a hamlet, they, do they? How do we get there? It's far to the east. Okay. So we have bandits, a skulking vermin, a titan. Wow, how about this bone-chilling horror? Doesn't sound it very good, does it? Yes, this one. What is that about? There are foul goings on over at the fort of Malign Amazes. <laughs> okay. Where is Malign Amazes? Far to the east. And a detailed description again. Well, this guy knows where everything is, doesn't he? In the midwinter of 101. The hellish leaks constructed malign amazes. Okay. How about the missing treasure? What treasure is missing? The goblin M. Malign covers once lure forest the spiral of chilling the fungi wood amulet returned. Last I heard it was in yellow fenced. Okay, well, where's yellow fenced? Far to the east. Everything is far to the east, apparently. There's a tavern there named the Barricaded Tongue. Okay, fine. Let's see. So, we've got the abductions that was in the dark, dark fortress. Not going to go there. Sorry about your kids and all, but no. How about the other beasts? Creature of the night has our people cowering in fear. Merkskull, the abyssal knight, is in the forest of brass. Seek this place if you hunt Orim, the faint ghost, the vile creature. Okay, maybe. Might be able to do that. How do we get there? It's inaccessible from here. Why are you complaining about it, buddy? Help me out here. How about some more bandits? Tell me about some bandits nearby. They have a hamlet called Nobleheads in the awe-inspiring plain. Okay. Where's Nobleheads? Far to the east. Okay, well, I'm getting an idea here that if I just go east, I'm going to encounter a whole bunch of, of people to kill. And that sounds just fine to me. So let's, let's give it a whirl. So we go out of the fortress here because we can't fast travel while we are inside the fortress. What was that? Who's fighting? It's become enraged. 
Is it you two over here? Let's have a look. The goblin Ngo Kang Stozusno and the goblin animal dissector. And there is blood on the ground here, a spattering of goblin blood. Are you injured? Your left hip and left upper leg are injured. Why? What happened? It's bruised. How about the other guy? No? Let's see, you, 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 you. Are you injured? Oh, you are indeed injured. What happened to you? His fourth toe, left foot is broken. His toe is smashed open. His left foot is torn open. Jeez, he's not doing too great, is he? So yes, they have been fighting. We get the, the nice status uh, of all the different body parts there. Red being super bad. Um, left foot maybe being broken makes it brown. Yellow is a, a little bit damaged and white is fine. Anyway, I don't care about your, your little squabbles, goblins. Let's press shift and T. And then we get this nice uh, fast travel screen. And we are represented by the, the at symbol. And we want to go... We get the, the, like, the zoomed in version on the left here, and then we get the kind of zoomed out, even smaller one on the right. Let's see, if we go out of the town here... Yeah, there we go, we get a, a bit of a bigger map now. So, what have we got? There's a stream, and there's a river. What are these white things here? Cannot travel through the monastery. Okay, well, that, that tells me what that is. It's a monastery. So we want to go to the east, right? To the east. Oh, I see a little star on the map. The asterisk usually is something traveling that you can maybe fight. Yeah. Oh, it's running away from me. Come on, don't, don't run, don't run. Okay, looks like we're on top of it if we stop. Now, press D to stop. Where is it? Can't see anything. Some ravens. Not interested in those. I don't think it would be ravens that would show up on the the travel map. No, never mind. I guess it doesn't want to... Not interested in fighting. Or is it? Come on, where are you? Oh, 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 there it is, there it is. Greasy hair maceman. This is a fight. I must press on. So yeah, this is a, a random traveling bandit or soldier for him. Do the L key and mouse over him. It says lethal. Lethal means he wants to, to have a go. And he's probably going to want to bash our skull in with that mace. So let's let's practice some combat in Dwarf Fortress Adventure Mode. Hopefully this is not the, the first and the last fight. Because <laughs> every fight has a, a chance to be quite lethal. Let's see. If we... We move over to him now. We can actually let him come to us just by pressing the the period key. That's like the the wait command. So if I press period, there we go. He got a little bit closer to me. Not a little bit, quite a bit. So if we press the, the comma key, that's like a half period. Let's see. He's coming closer. Yeah, come closer. There he is. Now if we want to attack, we have to press shift and A. Okay, and it says you are fighting a greasy hair maceman. Okay, let's strike him. Now it tells us what do we what do we want to aim for exactly? Let me just move this out the way so we can see it. What do we want to aim for? We get a whole whole bunch of options, and we can even go to the next screen. We get a whole list of many many options. Okay. Is pressing the the asterisk key, and actually some of them have this like blue, light blue exclamation mark next to them, and that's like a a special hit that is pretty much guaranteed to hit. Let's see. 
So this one is for the second toe left foot. And if we press E on that one, it says that if we want to, to scratch, <laughs> if we want to scratch his toe on his right foot, then that's going to be an easy thing to do. Um, I'm not sure that's the most effective <laughs> combat maneuver to uh, try at the moment. And also his, uh, his second finger, left hand, we can punch. And that would also be a simple maneuver to do. Probably not also the, the best option when you have a, a guy with a mace trying to bash your skull in. So let's see. Usually it's better to choose the, the things that have the easier strike. That means they're more likely to hit. But then it kind of separates between how easy it is to hit and then whether it can hit well or not. We, so we see we get easier strike but can't quite connect. Or we get difficult strike but it's fairly solid. Or we get things like the, the lower body which is an easy strike and is square. So that's a pretty solid choice. Unfortunately the, the lower body is... Of course it's a, it's a good hit in the long run but like in terms of winning fights against creatures like the best way I've found is to cut off their hands and, and legs or, or feet whenever possible. That That is almost a guaranteed kill if you can get one of those. So what I might do first is if I have a look, if I press escape here and I go to press L, and I have a look at this guy again and look at his armor and I check. He, he has a shield, okay, he has a flail, he has leather armor only, no no metal armor. Okay, so most of my attacks should be able to go through any of his armor because I'm using an iron sword. That's fine. So what should we attack? Now just because it says difficult strike doesn't mean it won't hit. You know, you can choose D head for the for the difficult strike and you can still get it occasionally. But also there's a, a fair chance that they will mi it will miss or they will dodge it and then they might be able to get a counter strike or something on you. So each choice here is um, fairly important, at least when you, when you first start with your adventure and you don't have a whole bunch of leveled up skills. So let's, let's try maybe the right upper arm for the easier strike, right? It can't quite connect, but maybe maybe it'll be okay. Let's let's see. So that's that's E, and then we get to choose. We're using a scimitar, so we can slash with it. We can stab. We can slap with the the flat side of the blade. We can strike with the pommel. We can strike with the shield. You can punch with your hands, kick with your feet, scratch with your nails, and bite too. So I'm gonna do 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 do. do. I'm just going to do a normal slash. We can even like modify the attacks with these these other keys U V W X Y Z. We can change. We can make it quicker. So if I press uh, U, for example, this affects it. Makes it an easier strike. It makes it fast that time as well. But also it says that it's not as powerful. So if my if my scimitar does hit then there's a chance I can chop the arm off. But if I choose a fast attack, it reduces the power of the hit and it might not then chop the, the arm off. So, you know, there's some give and take in these things. You could choose a, a heavier attack, but then it's slower to hit and you're also slower to recover as well. But it hits harder. But then if you're if you're recovering and he gets a counter attack on you and smashes your brain in, then it wasn't really worth it, was it? So I'm going to to just attack normally with with no modifications, just a normal slash on A. Let's see. So I, I slashed the greasy hair maceman in the right upper arm with my iron scimitar, tearing apart the muscle through his llama wool cloak. And because of that, he lost hold of his shield. So that's actually a great hit for me. And he bashed me in the lower left arm with her flail, but the attack was deflected by my iron left gauntlet. And this is this is why the the iron armor is so kind of important when you create your character. If I hadn't had that, then that could have been a very messy 
uh, lower left arm that I would have had. Unfortunately, now I don't. And my opponent, on the other hand, now is does have a messy, messy arm and has dropped her shield, will not be able to block, is bleeding. And her right upper arm is cut open. Right upper arm, so that's like here, right? Cut open and dropped her shield. Okay, that's good for me. So what's next? Let's see. What can we strike? So the lower body is good again. Anything... The left foot with an easy strike, that's a good choice. If you make your opponent fall down, then their speed is severely reduced. And then you can get a whole bunch of attacks in when they can't. I can, I can hit the cheek. Ooh, I can stab the cheek with my scimitar for a direct hit. That sounds a little bit too fun to not take. Okay, let's, let's stab the cheek. <laughs> You stab the greasy hair maceman in the right cheek with your iron scimitar and the injured part is cloven asunder. The iron scimitar has lodged firmly in the wound. The force pulls the head, tearing apart the skin and bruising the upper spine's nervous tissue. A tendon in the upper spine has been bruised and so this now causes the greasy hair maceman to lose hold of her bronze flail and to fall over. Wowza. Well, I guess if somebody does like kind of stab you right in the cheek, right? And it busts your whole cheek open and jolts your head like that, like I'd probably fall over too, you know? It's not like a character assassination against this this maceman. But this uh this is now a a fight very much in my favor. Drop the drop the shield on the first hit. Drop the weapon on the second hit, and also fell onto the ground. And uh, yeah, we can see their upper spine is is blue. Oh dear. Her head is torn open. Hmm. Her right cheek is mangled beyond recognition, and her upper spine is bruised. Oh, poor girl, she's on the ground, she's bleeding, and she's winded. Oh dear. And it says here, now, when I press Shift and A to attack, it says, The greasy hair maceman has yielded. Attack anyway. I can press Alt and Y to confirm, or I can abort. Let's see, if we talk to, talk to this greasy hair maceman, and we ask for a cease to hostilities, what do you say? Let's just stop this pointless fighting. And she says, I will fight no more. Well, you can't really fight anymore, can you, love? You you dropped your shield and you dropped your, your weapon and you're kind of on the, on the ground with a bruised spine, right? So that's uh, completely understandable. And now when we, when we look at the greasy hair maceman, she, she no longer has this lethal tag, right? So actually, we don't have to, to kill her, but then again, I am a worshipper of the god of, mur of murder and death, right? Maybe I should tell her that. I have an ongoing conversation with her. Well, oh, why are you traveling? I'm on an important mission. Okay. Me too. Let's see. We can tell her. Let's see. No. Make a demand. Investigate or interrogate. Express your emotions. State your values. Okay. Brag about my past to violent acts. <laughs> let me see. Let me let me tell her. See if I can tell her that I really worship the the god of murder and death. Um. <laughs> okay. The value of hard work. No. No. The worthlessness of fairness. <laughs> That's not my values, though. Oh, okay, here we go. The worthlessness... So I can tell her that peace is worthless, actually, and then I'll kill her, right? That would be... that would be fun. The value of self-control. The worthlessness of law. <laughs> 
I'm gonna tell her that peace peace is worthless. Uh, how I long for the beautiful spectacle of war. I don't want to argue. <laughs> but I, I understand why in her position she would not want to argue about that. Okay. Agree to drop the argument or I can press the argument. I'm going to press this, I'm afraid. How I, I, no, I mean it. How I long for the beautiful spectacle of war. No, war is sometimes necessary, but peace must be valued as well when we can have it. <laughs> I wonder if she wants peace. I can agree completely. Or I can dismiss her argument. Hmm. I'm going to dismiss. I couldn't follow your rambling. <laughs> if you insist so strongly, we can move on. Okay. Let's see. Let's interrogate. Ask about the listener's master or boss. Who do you work for? I must take my leave. Well, where are you going to go exactly with a, a bruised spine? Okay, goodbye. And she, oh, this whole time, my scimitar was lodged in her face. <laughs> so this whole time that I was telling her that, that peace is worthless like my sword was still lodged in her face this whole time and she was like well i see your point but it's not really my thing i'm like no no really war is the best thing with this this sword stuck in her face and now she now she wants to leave she pulled it out she says she's moving north and attacking me how dare you how very dare you we will strike we will strike your your right hand, and we will slash it. You slash the greasy hair maceman in the right hand with your iron scimitar, and the injured part is cloven asunder. An artery has been opened by the attack. A sensory nerve has been severed. A ligament has been torn. Wow. Wowza. Oof. She goes back to attacking me. And let's see. We, we get a good strike on the neck here. A solid normal strike on the neck let's slash slash the neck and the neck is torn asunder Ooh, lovely 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 and the the right foot yes okay this is not pretty how about the head can we chop off the head you slash the greasy hair mace in the head with your iron scimitar and the injured part is cloven asunder oh dear and the iron scimitar has lodged firmly in the wound. The greasy hair maceman has been struck down. And there we go. First kill of the successful adventurer. Onwards to the to the east, looking for more targets. So the, the dark blue lines here are the rivers, and the brown is the road. So we, we can't cross the, the river normally, but if we take the road, we can. So that's useful. And this is another town we're coming up on here. I see another asterisk moving away through the forest. So this town, this town, does it have anything interesting? Looks like that's a negative. So we just move through the town. We keep going east. And what is this place? This is a castle. Okay. You know, sometimes castles have some free kind of equipment lying around, so let's let's go have a look inside the castle. Oh, so it should be to the north of where I am now. Let's just go up this hill. Yep, there it is. Where is the gate here? Okay, in we go. Okay, I guess the main building is up here somewhere. Yeah, good. A whole bunch of people inside again. And, yep, there are some bags on the ground. Let's see, what do we have here? So press G to have a look. 
And let's see, some bronze bolts, a bag, glove, a black tip reef shark leather coat. Hmm, well, that one sounds cool. Let's take that. And let's see, if we go to our inventory and we find that coat. Oh no, we see that I've been crying. <laughs> Coating of Zostra Champion Punches Human Tears. Well, how about this this coat? This coat. I want to wear the coat, right? What would you like to wear? So let's press W to wear. I want to wear this coat, so let's press B. There we go. I'm wearing the, the coat. What else have we got here? What's not in this chest? A silver short sword. I don't think silver is actually a very good cutting weapon. I think it makes a better a uh, bashing weapon like hammers and maces are good if they're silver or oh, like all the different metals have you know all the typical attributes so silver is is a very heavy metal so if you get a silver hammer and you're a hammerman then it's, it's going to do more damage because it's heavier right it has more impact which is something nice about this game um a copper scimitar and i already have an iron scimitar so so no there's a leather glove, some stuff and some stuff I don't want. Okay, so nothing there. I wonder if we go up. Is there be anything up the stairs? Mm, looks like there's a no. Who is this? A slit eyes siege operator. Okay. So that looks like a, a no. Nothing, nothing interesting to borrow from from this place. So let's leave. Back through the gate, out the front, shift and T for the travel. You cannot travel until you leave this site. Okay, have to get a little bit further away first. Let's try again now. Still not far enough away. Come on, come on. This should be fine. Let's travel. You must move away from the surrounding obstacles before you travel. Okay, come on. What, what obstacles exactly are we talking about here? Uh, something I forgot here that we can do is what? what? What did I drop? Why did I drop my carving knife? Don't do that. What we can do is if we press L to look around, and then we also use the the greater than or less than keys, which we use to go up and down stairs. We can also use that while using the the look function to look up and down. So like we can actually see the the branches of trees, and we can go and look up into the air. Then we see again the branches of the trees go down and now we're back on ground level. Sometimes it's handy just to be able to see some flying enemies or things like that. There's an asterisk below me. Let's see. Can we get a, another fight here? Uh-oh. Ambush. Oh shit, that's a lion. Ah, oh, oh god. I just had to do it, didn't I? Ambushed by lions. Or by a lion. A skinny giant lion. It's not just a lion, it's a giant lion. Oh. Buggery. Well then, this is not amusing in any way, but let's... <sighs> okay, if this is what we gotta do, then this is what we gotta do. I wonder if we could just run away. <laughs> Maybe this is this is the opportunity to to have a look at the the new movement menu. Or not new, it's been around for a few versions of, of Dwarf Fortress, but we can do things like we can sprint away if we want, or we can run away. So if I go to run and I press enter, I start start now moving to the left. My speed actually picks up pretty good up to 2.5 rather than 1, but this lion is catching up with me, no problem. So you know what, let's let's do the fight. You come to me, lion boy. And uh, if I die, I die, right? Uh, come on, come on. A little bit closer, that's it, that's it, all right, here we go. It's on. 
So, the right rear paw has a simple hit. I can stab his right rear paw with my iron scimitar for a simple strike. Perfect. Let's take that one. You stab the giant skinny lion in the right rear paw with your iron scimitar, chipping the bone. An artery has been opened by the attack, a ligament has been torn, and a tendon has been torn. Hmm, okay. And he attacks me, but I jump away. So let's have a look at this. This giant lion now. Heavy bleeding. So I guess, actually, I could just kind of dodge away until he bleeds to death if we opened an artery, right? That is an option at this stage. Let's see. What are we up to now? Nothing great there. What's this? Attack the toe. <laughs> no, I don't think a toe, a toe attack is the best one to do at the moment. Now, which... Which paw did I just attack? Press A in the right rear paw. And, and again, actually, I get the same option to attack the right rear paw with an easy strike. Or the lower body with a normal strike. Or I could even try to dodge away. If I dodge to the southwest, let's try that. Dodge. Dodge away. Okay, now he has to come to me. This this flashing stairs symbol means he's moving to the left. And let's see. You, I move. Oof, he attacked me again. Okay, I think he's much faster than me. So you, you come to me. Oh. Okay, come on, come on. That's it. I know you're you're bleeding. There you are. What have we got? Okay, this is looking much, much better. So an easier strike, fairly solid, on the right front paw. That's a good one. Upper body is nice, but on the other hand, it doesn't make them fall down quite so much as chopping their paws off does. So let's do the, the right front paw. Just a normal slash. It missed me. I slash it in the right front paw, fracturing the bone. Another artery has been opened. Many nerves have been severed. A ligament has been torn, and he falls over. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. That is what I want. Okay. And he's charging, charging west, even though he's kind of crawling on the ground now. Let's, let's dodge to the north. Dodge. And he is now attacking me with grab. Oh dear, attacking with grab. Okay, what have we got? What have we got? Easy strike on the lower body. The throat, difficult strike, but very square. Shall we go for the difficult strike on the throat? Slash the throat. Let's try. Ooh, you slash the skinny giant line in the neck, tearing apart the muscle and fracturing the upper spine's bone. Another artery has been opened. This lion is toast. And he's regaining his balance, so let's dodge. I wonder if we attack him now. Got a good chance at anything. Okay, got a, a chance to attack his left ear by kicking it. Okay, so... Not going to kick the lion in the ear. I don't think that's a really tactical decision here. He's recovering, right? So I wonder if we go for the for the head stab. What would that do? He scrambles away. Attacking with grab. Can we dodge away? Let's dodge to the southwest here. Let's move away. I don't think he can catch me now. <clears throat> Yeah. He's too busted up. His front paw, his rear paw, his spine and his neck, heavy bleeding. He's on the ground. I think actually if I just kind of wait, he'll probably bleed to death, right? Come on. Come on. Come on. I opened like three arteries on you, buddy. How much blood have you got? 
No, he's just not giving up yet. All right, you, you come to me then. Okay, let's see. What have we got? The left rear leg, easy strike, fairly solid. Yeah, that sounds just fine. Let's do a slash. Aha, uh -huh, there we go. You slash the, the skinny giant lion in the left rear leg with your iron scimitar, fracturing the bone. An artery has been opened again. This time, the giant lion gives in to pain. That means he is unconscious. And now any hit is pretty much a guaranteed hit. So let's let's stab him in the head. Okay. And my sword got stuck in got stuck in there, which is unfortunate. We go to uh wrestle though. We we should be able to Ah, no, it's not this one. It is the interaction screen, right? And if we go to Iron Scimitar R and now we can press A to gain possession of it. Yep, we pull it out of his head. And let's go for another one. Let's this time slash the head. Jeez, just uh, he's got a strong head, huh? Let's slash again. Maybe let's do a, a heavy attack. Let's press V to modify and slash. Okay. Yeah. Wow. This this lion. Maybe the neck would be a, a better option. So neck V. Make it a heavy attack and slash the neck. Oh man, I can just like pounding on this this passed out lion trying to kill it okay again might as well just keep slashing away still going yep slash okay he's probably just gonna bleed to death i guess if we just move down we also pull out the the sword and he's getting a uh, Tiresome, so let's kick him in the head just because I'm getting frustrated. Okay, still, still, still somehow surviving these slashes to the, the neck. Let's, let's stab him in the chest then. Okay, stab, stab, stab. Okay, he looks sick like he didn't look sick already. Yeah, he's got trouble breathing. Like you can damage the lungs as well, so that things can just suffocate to death. Okay. Like, seriously, what, what are we going to do to kill this lion? Like, can we just bash its head in with the shield, maybe? Yeah, no, we just bruised him. It's a giant lion, after all. Head. E. Again, just bruising. I think like it does add up though, like if you just keep bashing a bashing a bashing, eventually something breaks. It can only take so much so much bashing. Come on, lion, like this is this is really how you wanna go out. My goodness. Let's just slash everything. Slash him to pieces. All the arteries everywhere. Look at this. Look at this lion. He's pale. Pale. Okay. Skull, guts, upper spine, right lung, legs, neck, head, upper body, lower body. Look at this. His neck is mangled beyond recognition. <laughs> His head is cut open. His head is bruised. God. Just die, man. Just die. Oh, there we go. Struck down. Yes. Finally. Okay. Ah. <sighs> well, then. There's his corpse. We can actually pick up his corpse if we want. Now, what's the... There's something we can do here. We can strap our thingy. There's a key. There's a key to do something to butcher 
butcher the body, but I forgot what it is. What is it to butcher? Mm -hmm. Quick Google should solve this. Mm. The X key, okay. So, select an action, butcher. We can butcher the... We can pet an animal, compose a poem. <laughs> let's, uh, let's butcher this lion's body. I have to have a knife, right? So where's my, where's my knife? I do have a knife. Walnut, walnut wood carving knife. Yeah, this is what I want. So it's okay. I should be able to butcher with my sword, right? With the iron scimitar. Yeah. And now we have this lion's mangled bone, his tooth. We have lion meat, lion fat, mangled hair, mangled skull, prepared giant lion brain. So like I can take this prepared giant lion brain, right? Press D to take it. Let's take two. We take that. And now if we press E for eat, we can actually eat the the lion brain. There we go. Look at that. Kill the giant lion. Eat the giant lion. Everybody's happy. Let's see if we dropped any other kind of food. We've got the normal meat. Prepared giant lion kidney. Yeah, we can eat that too. What else? Spleen, sweet bread, tripe, prepared intestines, prepared giant lung, prepared giant lion eye. Ooh. Let's just take the, the lungs, I guess, because there's four of them. And maybe... Maybe a bone, just as a uh, keepsake. Don't want to take the skull because it's all mangled from my smashing. Let's just take one. No, I didn't want all of those. I just wanted one. Let's take the skull instead then. Where is it? Mangled skull. There. Yep. Okay. Jolly good. Let's be off in our merry way. We are thirsty. So, not drop quench right q no no oh dear what is the key for drink if eat and the the water has been turned to ice which is unfortunate we can actually can make fire i forgot how to make a fire go somewhere warm it won't matter Let's see, it is getting night time, so our vision on the map is decreasing. So well, let's see if we can spend spend the night in this lovely little town over here. Because you do also get sleepy. That is something that happens in adventure mode. Okay, we have to find a building. And I think it's Z or... Shift Z, yeah. We will sleep as necessary for eight hours and we press yes, that sounds good. And then the broad child <laughs> says, Can I help you with something? And we have an ongoing conversation with the child and we say, Yes, can I stay here for the night? Um hmm. try to calm the listener, no. Ask about the surrounding area, ask for permission to stay for a day. It would be terrible to leave someone to fend for themselves after sunset, indubitably. So, now, let me sleep for eight hours. Yes. Okay, wonderful. Now, in our inventory we have water, let's eat the water, we drink the water, and now we are no longer super thirsty. Drink it again. 
and let's eat some prepared lion brain and now the thirsty and hungry tags at the bottom have gone away and we can we can resume our merry journey killing things such as lions and uh, greasy hair macemen so where are we going next i guess still to the east right that's m that's map, right? We want the big map. So let's press Q for the log. And let's look for... Hellish Midnight Recreations. What is that place? So that's where the faint ghost vile creature is. That one's not known. Oh, this one's pretty close. Yeah, okay, so let's see. Let's view the full map. So, this one, Malign Amazes Fort. That's the fort that they com complained about, which is actually just directly to the east. Okay. That looks like a fun place to go, so let's just keep going to the to the east then. What if we go on our merry journey? Into a town here. Or a hamlet, I think it is. Yep. And those are mountains in the way. Oh, we cannot travel through those. I was expecting mountains here, but okay. Let's keep going. We get hungry and thirsty as we travel, so you know what we can do. We can stop by the river here. I have discovered a river. Yes, I have. I have indeed. Okay, here's the river, and we can even just <laughs> press eat. Oh, the water is stagnant here. Okay, that's a... What is that creature there? That is a muscular alligator snapping turtle. Well, let's let's not spend too much time near that thing. Okay, this water is fine. We can actually just drink the water here, Jay. Yes, good. Let's climb out of the water. Actually, let's interact with the. Where is it? Where is my water skin there? With I. And let's fill the water skin. Let's press A with the water that's here. Jolly, good, wonderful stuff. Hello, good morning. So much work today. Your mic is a bit low, by the way. If there's ambient sound, it's hard to hear you. But it might just be me. Okay. I mean, usually when I when I do my sound test and I listen to my microphone, it's really loud. If as long as like everything is is at max volume. So I actually do decrease the the sound a bit. I reduce the the decibels in my in my streamlabs. But it it I mean it might just be you, but I don't want to make it super loud for everyone, right? So that they have to turn the the volume super 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 down. Have you ever, have you ever played this uh game, Reese's? Dwarf Fortress. I spent a few hours derping around, but nothing successful. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a really hard game. No, no lying there. I have played it a lot in the in the past though, so I'm fairly fairly familiar with it. Oh, where am I on the map now? Look, look. I think the fortress is down here. This is the fortress that they want me to kill everyone in, right? This one. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's stop here. This is the fortress filled with bad guys. Okay, this could get interesting. Okay, here goes nothing. Boof. Nobody inside. Hmm. Where is everyone?
Hmm. Wow, this is a really tall tower, but I can't climb it any higher. Ah, there's a wall here. Okay, okay. Let me in. Okay, this is a bit tricky. Where is the entrance? Is this what you mostly play in the games? Uh, I just realized that I haven't played uh, Dwarf Fortress in a while. I mean, usually I like to to play games that have like a certain level of um, complexity to them, right? And then that way I can explain how we do it, how we look at things, how we can play it successfully. Because uh, a lot of games like Dwarf Fortress, for example, they, they don't come with any tutorial or anything, you know? And so, like, in some ways, then, I feel like it kind of excludes a lot of people from from enjoying the game. And, you know, I, I think a lot of these games are really, really fun. And I think I can probably explain well enough to help people understand how to play it, too. So, that's what I like to do. I mean, for the really simple games, like racing games or stuff like that, you don't really need somebody to, to explain to you the, the different complexities of it right but some games like dwarf fortress you do so it's not that i just like to to play indie games i just like to play games that are difficult and then i can you know make a little tutorials or show people how to do different things in the game and things like that just helping really i cannot find a, a way in to this place aha sneaky entrance here let's see if we can jump down jump uh-oh, do not alter, do not alter, yeah, let me in, aha, aha, <laughs> it's just a, just a wall, what is this place, this place is weird, Like, people ask me to go here because it's filled with bad guys, and I come here and there's nothing. It's abandoned. Can we climb the walls? Oh no, they are way too high. Way too high. Or well, can we? What is climb? Forgot the, the key for climb. H? Yeah, if we hold onto the wall and we climb to the open space above, 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 uh, oh, I can't climb. Does that thing go higher? It does. Okay, so let's, yeah. This is risky because I could just suddenly lose my grip on the wall. Yeah, I get that. I love card games and card roguelites myself, like Slay the Spire, Monster Train, which has their own level of complexity. But I have a hard time getting into Dwarf Fortress because of the visuals. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, I completely understand what you mean. I, I even played Dwarf Fortress before it had these visuals. Like, these visuals are actually an upgrade from from the original game, because the original game doesn't even use tile sets, it just uses uh, the ASCII keys. So everything is just letters and a slash and question marks and things like that. And I, I still played it when it was in that stage without the, the tile sets, and I enjoyed it. But uh, I understand that these uh, graphics are not for everyone. This is still ugly, but different at least. Yeah, I mean, I know exactly what you mean. I mean, it's like, it's a 10 or 15 year work in progress so far. So it's like, it's a huge game and hugely complex. Ha 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 ha, yes. Oh, 
Ho ho ho, I climbed into this place. That's right, no escape, you villains that are hiding in here. I am coming for you. So let's go down. Can we interact with this thing? This. Or do I need to climb over this damn wall as well? Let's see. Let's hold this one. And let's climb to the open space above. Let's go. Yeah, in this way. And we'll just climb down the wall because this is being a pain in my ass. And below. Below. And down. Yeah. Okay. Getting there. Let's just jump down. And we are in. And those exclamation marks tell me that there are some creatures around here. What's it gonna be? You tried Project Zomboid? Yeah, actually I have played that. But it was it was a long time ago now. What's this here? That's a goblin, right? Goblin Hammer Man. An obese goblin hammer man. I did play Project Zomboid. It's a, it's a very fun game, but again... I guess I would use the same argument that you just used against me. <laughs> Which is that it, it doesn't look that good. Like, I, I really like zombie survival games. And if the if Project Zomboid or a game there was a game like that with nicer graphics, I am sure that I would play the hell out of it, you know. But um, the way it is, like, it's just something about it that doesn't quite quite work for me. I don't know what it is. But I guess just like Dwarf Fortress has been upgraded a lot since the the past few years, I guess Project Zomboid probably has as well, right? So it might be worth uh having a look at again it's gotten some big updates recently but it's also a five year early access <laughs> i mean dwarf fortress is kind of like a an early access thing too right except the the creator doesn't call it early access he just says this is my thing that i'm doing and if you want to play it you can and i'm not going to make you pay for it like he did he, he he gets by on donations and people like dwarf fortress so much that he gets like seven to ten thousand dollars a month in donations just in donations from people who love this game and love the the work he's done okay goblin boy you don't hate me right you're just obese you're just fat hello my name is zostra champion punch this servant of death greets you and he says hello i am Nom dreadful haunted okay apparently some people have a problem with you buddy i hear there is that there is an insurrection against the hellish leaks in malign mazes well that's where we are now like what are you talking about let's say that it should be stopped with violent force it was inevitable Another guy here. Like sometimes these um these insurrections and civil wars work a bit weirdly. Wow, look at all these tables and chairs. Like sometimes you they these goblins will will take over a place and the people who used to live there will be like, Help, help, they they took it and you go there and uh I mean the goblins are still here, but they're just like, Hey dude, what's up? And you're like, Okay, well, yeah. This guy is injured. A frail goblin bowman. Ouch. What have you been fighting? Wowza. What happened? There's something... Ooh, there's stuff happening over here. That's a lot of people and stuff. Okay, he's going in, I think. You, you go first. Wow, that's a lot of goblins. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha.
Ah, oh, well, I'm glad I didn't go in there immediately. Oof. Oof. Jesus. Look at this. A massive chin, goblin crossbowman, goblin pikeman, goblin lasher, goblin crossbowman, goblin chief executioner. Jeez. Okay, then. They're not... They're not hostile to me, but sometimes what happens is you you look at them and you think, oh, they're not hostile, it's fine. So you just like explore and then they're like, oh, we're all hostile to you now, by the way. Oops. Somebody's fighting somewhere, right? Oh, no, 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 no. See, you see what happened just now? I did the the movement down and it automatically attacked this this goblin lasher oh dear oh dear that's not good oh my my twitch chat just uh gotta work a bit good luck man we'll leave stream on in the background all right no worries man thanks Reese's. nice to see you again Something happened with my Twitch app. Let's fix that. So, how to deal with this? This is a... Oh man, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them that want to fight me now. Oh dear. So, let's... He's attacking me with his iron shield, or he's recovering from attacking me with his iron shield, so why don't I just dodge to the west? Dodge away. Okay. And he missed me. And somebody else says, identify yourself. Okay, the overlord. Okay. What does he have? Gloves. He has a human hair crown. Well, that's interesting. I wonder how he, how he got that. <laughs> well, let's keep. So let's see. He's attacking me with an iron shield. Let's, let's dodge away again. Or, if I make them all come through this small doorway, that's a good kind of, uh, what do you call it? There's a name for it, but uh, my mind is drawing a blank. Let's just attack. Let's see, what have we got going on here? I can chop his left hand. And I don't have my weapon out, so I should probably take it out. There we go. Yeah. You draw the iron scimitar, you draw the bronze shield, you press Q if you want to take things out and put them away. Okay. Ooh, the neck has a simple strike with the bronze shield. I'm going to take that. Let's see. You strike the bulging eyes, goblin lasher in the neck with your bronze shield, bruising the muscle and bruising the upper spine's bone. Okay, it's not too bad. What's he doing now? He's attacking me. With his own shield, I can attempt to parry it, I can block it, I can dodge, or I can just attack him myself again. How about this? Right upper arm, I can scratch. That's not, that's not useful, is it? Nothing else good. Let's go for the chest slash. The attack is deflected by his mail, by his small copper breastplate. Oh, he's got metal armor. I didn't know that. How about the neck? Ooh, how about the left upper leg? Let's see. Let's look at this guy's armor. What's he got? Copper mail shirt, copper breastplate, small iron cap on his head, copper chain leggings, iron left gauntlet, iron right gauntlet, Gauntlet, iron high boot. Damn, this guy's got some good armor. So the high boot is on his left foot. Let's fire attack his right foot. Could be okay. Let's see. Left upper leg or the neck. Let's slash the neck. Yeah, that's the one. 
in the neck from behind, with the scimitar bruising the muscle and tearing the upper spine's nervous tissue through his cloak. And he loses his shield and he falls over. Yep, that's good. And now, let's see, his right foot, right? That's the one without the, the armor. And the right foot is... Uh, damn it, that was, a, that was a wrong foot. It's the left foot that doesn't have the armor, but it still twisted his ankle. Left hand? Slash the left hand. No, he's still just pulling his wrist. Okay, now we have two, two enemies. So why don't I... Attack this one instead, the Overlord. Oh boy, okay. Let's just dodge away from the Overlord. Let's dodge to the to the west. Okay. He's gonna come to me. Let's press comma. Still waiting, come on. Are you coming? No. There you are. So, me versus the Overlord. Let's have a look at his armor first. What, what are you wearing, buddy? Fur cloak, fur cap, leather, leather, silk, 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 silk. Okay, so no metal armor. This is going to go very badly for you. So, your right lower leg is going to get slashed, but he jumps away. Oof. He's agile. Let's try again. How about this time? Left lower leg. Flash. I missed. He attacks me, but I jump away. Somebody shot me with an arrow. You, you little bastards. Got to watch out for that. That's for sure. So let's dodge to the southwest. So we're out of the angle of fire. Oh dear, this is rapidly going to crack. Okay, go down here, and here, and around the corner, and then less likely to get shot with arrows. They can't see me. Here comes a spearman. Come on, spearman. You coming or not? No. Let's see, use the look key. Okay, not yet. There's a spearman. Let's see, anything good on him? Check his armor first before we decide where to attack. Ooh, iron mail shirt, iron breastplate, iron cap, iron chain leggings. Copper right gauntlet, copper left gauntlet. So nothing good on his feet. Okay. Maybe I can work with that. Right hand, right foot. Slash. He parried it with a silver spear. Oh dear. How about left lower leg? Slash. Yes, and he falls down. That's what I wanted. Okay. And let's retreat. The jutting goblin spearman strikes at you, but the shot is narrowly deflected by the iron scimitar. Oh dear. Maybe let's see if we can go through this door on the left before we get shot too much by the by the bowman. Okay, let's wait here. Let them come to us. Come on. Yep, there's the overlord. All right, overlord, me and you again. Any nice hits? No. So let's let's see. Can we get a good slash on your head? He jumps away. Attacking me. The left hand. Oh, missed. He attacked me, but I jumped away. So this is a good opponent. He's good at dodging. Slash, he jumps away. Come on. Let's do this. Left upper arm, easier strike, slash. He dodges again, damn. Neck. Misses again, strikes at you, but I block with the shield. 
He's recovering, but he's also charging. So let's dodge while he charges. Dodge to the east. Let him charge. There we go. Misses that charge. Get a good strike on the head. Slash the head. No, he misses. Here's the, the spearman that fell down. Finally caught up. He should be an easy strike on the left hand. Let's try that. Strike the left hand from behind, and the severed part sails off in an arc. He drops his shield, but he still has his spear, right? Which is not ideal. So, can we chop off his right hand, too? Right hand. Or should we dodge away? Let's see if we can dodge to the southwest. Okay, good. Kind of getting backed into a corner here, but such is the way of the the warrior. Overlord comes in, can't get a good strike on him. Left foot can't quite connect, but let's try. He jumps away. Okay, in he comes again. Left lower arm. Damn. He's too good. His skills are too good. He has no weapons, no armor, and I still can't hit him. Yep, too difficult. Okay, let's try again. Just got to keep trying. Nope. And the Spearman is back. So, Spearman, what do you have left? Let's see if we can chop your, your right arm this time and make you drop that spear. Yep, yeah, there we go. He gave into pain. He dropped the spear. Wonderful. Back to the the Overlord. Okay. Tricky strike, very square. No, he didn't get that one. Try again. Nothing here. Let's dodge away. To the south. This is actually a really good way to um, improve skills. Let's see. My... Shield user skill is going up, my swordsman skill is going up, my armor skill is going up too, my fighting skill is going up. All good and no injuries. Okay, left hand, easy strike. Come on, we've got to get something on this guy. I wonder if I charge him. I could probably knock him down, right? Let's do a head and a charge. Let's press Y. Let's modify. Charge him. Bites me in the left foot. <laughs> so there we go. I charged. He, char he bites me in the left foot. It's deflected by my armor. But then he latches on to my foot. You charge at the upturned nose, Overlord. I collide with him and I knock him over. Okay, Reese's. Thank you for the follow. So because like the, I'm a human and he's a goblin, if I charge at him and, and we hit, because I've got the weight advantage, he now gets knocked over. Now that he's knocked over, I have an advantage to hit him. He's, he's regaining his balance. You forgot to press follow. It's okay. <laughs> I, thanks for that, Ben. I appreciate it. Let's see, let's see. Anything good here? Uh, the easiest strike is his leg, but can't quite connect. But you know what? If we get his leg at least cut a little bit, he's not going to be able to... Ooh, I slashed him in the leg, tearing apart the muscle. Yes! Falls over. Now he's boned. Super boned. You are now going to be my bitch. Slash his hand, cuts the hand off, and the severed part sails off in an arc. Yes, this is the end of you, Overlord. I knew I just needed to do something, and that something was a charge. Let's cut your foot off. Oof, didn't quite cut it off. The sword gets stuck in the wound. <laughs> okay, let's, let's interact with the sword. And pull it out. Okay, gain possession. Yep, good. He 
the spearman gives into pain. The overlord is no longer stunned. He's attacking me now, but I think he's still on the ground, right? Yeah, he's on the ground. He's bleeding heavily. Pretty boned at this stage. What have we got? Left lower arm. We can punch him. All right. Punch him in the arm. He scrambles away. Right upper arm slash. Artery has been opened. That tore the muscle. Yep. Now it's just a matter of time. Go for the next slash. He jumps away. Oh, he attacks me and I have to jump away. Can't do anything there. I'm standing on top of him? Oh dear. That's weird. I wonder if I can wrestle him. If I wrestle with my right upper arm and I grab his neck. Okay. Okay. Didn't work. Grab the neck. He jumped out the way. Yeah. Okay. Come on. Once we grab the neck, we can strangle him. He keeps rolling away. <laughs> it's okay. This is the good way to to get the the wrestling skill up. Come on. Let me grab your neck. Wow, he's he's uh really relentless, huh? Okay, and try again. He rolls away. Come on, buddy. Just keep scrambling. How's my wrestling skill? I'm a novice wrestler. It's going up slowly. Now, let's see. I think actually with B... We can change our attack preference to close combat. We just press this one. Now, if we just press the direction of the opponent, it will automatically try to, to wrestle him. This is an easy way to, to level a skill. Okay. Got to be careful, though, not, not to do it too much. Now I'm on top of him, let's see. Grab the neck, missed. Ooh, I grab him by the small troll fur cap. Okay, now that I've grabbed him, I wonder if it's easier to grab the rest of him without him getting away. Nope. Don't want to do that. Let's try again. He's rolling away. Yep, this one, this one. Grab with the left upper arm, grab his neck. Doesn't work. You know what? Let's just... Let's just try to finish this. Dab. A major artery in the heart has been opened by the attack. Wonderful, there we go. You're done for, buddy. He bled to death seconds later. Now this guy, the goblin on the ground that's passed out from pain, we can actually suffocate him with wrestling. Because he's already passed out, so he doesn't really have much much uh, option in the thing. Oh no, it's not the neck, is it? It's the, it's the throat. It has to be the throat, which is not there. It's actually near the end toe fingers tongue throat there we go that's the one okay we grab him by by the throat with our arm go to wrestle and the throat is the left arm this one we can choke choke the throat yep we place a choke hold on his throat and we keep doing that we strangle him Okay, and we continue strangling 
and after a few strangles, he should be pretty toast. Yeah, there's three. Strangle. And there we go. He suffocated to death. Wonderful. Jolly, jolly good. So I killed the overlord. I could take his human hair crown if I wanted. I don't really want to take that, I think. This guy had a whole bunch of good armor, iron mail shirt, things like that, but it's all small because he's a goblin and I'm a human. So, let's let's let me stop here. I have to I have to go take my dogs out and do some things. So I'll just save the game, and we can continue later, maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow. Hope you enjoyed the, the stream. Dwarf Fortress, very fun, interesting game. A little bit difficult to get into. But I'm happy to explain how you can do that as it's a, it's a work of art, really. It's not a very business-oriented venture. This is just one guy's um, life work, as he calls it. And uh, it does a lot of things that other games don't do, as we see there with the the strangling and the stabbing and the arteries and the bleeding and the, the other things. It can be quite hard to get into. So, I hope you enjoy the stream. I'll be back later, maybe in a few hours, maybe tomorrow, I'm not sure yet. If you want to watch again, just follow the stream. So to everyone here, thanks for, thanks for watching and uh, hope you come back next time.